Hello, it's Mrs. Gaines here. I'd like to read you chapter 24, Looking for a Doctor. Next morning, Jim searched round for the sacking and straw to help make shrimps more comfortable. He managed to prop him up so he could eat more easily. But the boy only pecked at food. Shrimps, said Jim uneasy. What's up with you? Old age, brother. In his heart, Jim was afraid it might be the cholera. Many people were dying of that, he knew. What really happened, shrimps? I got beat up, didn't I? The old gentleman gave me a guinea. Honest, he did. Probably thought it was a farthing, but he gave me a guinea fair and square. I think he took a fancy to my charming face. I believe you. And I was followed down this alley. Some bloke said I'd nicked it off the old gentleman and I had to give it back. And when I said I hadn't, they started kicking me and punching me, like I was a rag doll. But I wasn't going to give my guinea up, was I? It was a present. Soon I'd give it to me ma, then them blokes. So I stuck it under my armpit. Anyway, they must have knocked me out good and proper. When I came to, my jacket had gone and my guinea with it, and all my laces too. So the lads brought me here. Carried me, they did. You should go to hospital. Shrimps panicked then. I don't want no hospital. I don't want no hospital. He was so scared that he tried to scramble out of the crate, knocking over the pot of water that Jim had just brought for him. I won't take you there, Jim promised him. Not if you don't want to go. Soon, shrimps drifted off to sleep. It frightened Jim watching him. It reminded him of the way his mother had been. He was afraid to leave him, and he was afraid to stay with him. When Shrimps woke again, he coughed as if his body would break in half. He leaned back after him, after the fit, exhausted. Think I swallowed a fly, Jim, he said. Must have slept with my mouth open. As he was drifting back into sleep again, Jim, Jim told him about Rosie's grandfather and about grimy Nick and Snipe. He told him about the terrible night he'd been, he thought he'd murdered Grimy Nick and about the circus and about Grimy Nick's appearance in the big tent. Ghost is supposed to be white and thin, not col, oh, not col, no, sorry, ghost, let me do that bit again. Ghost is supposed to be white and thin, not cold black with eyes like fires, chuckled shrimps. When Shrimp slept again, Jim went off in search of food and help. One store holder threw a cabbage at him, and he caught it <clears throat> before it hit him. Thanks, mister, he shouted. He ran back to the crates with it, broke up some boxes for firewood, and that night he begged a light from the night watchman. He ran back to the crates with his flare blazing and cooked the cabbage in a water pot over the fire. He ate well that night, and even shrimps managed to swallow some of the soupy liquid. That was a feast, Jim, he said, belching softly and lying back. His face in the firelight was full of deep shadows. I'll be better soon. But shrimps didn't get better. He had been starving for too long. Jim didn't know what to do to help him. He brought him fresh straw to lie on, but it was all he could do to roll him over and stuff it underneath. Shrimps was afraid that their hiding place would be found by the police. He made Jim pile up more and more boxes round him. Round them. The nights were bitterly cold, and the sun was so weak that the daytime was hardly warmer. Winter was upon them. Jim had asked the postermongers at the market for help. Some of the women came to peer at shrimps in the crate, but they'd seen many a child in that state before, and they just shrugged. The street boys bought him things to eat, but he was too ill to touch it. Needs a doctor, he does, one of the women said. He can't go to hospital, I promised, Jim said. He was desperate for help. Didn't anybody care? He's scared of being taken to the workhouse, the woman nodded. No, nowhere else for him, she said, turning her back on the crate, rubbing her arms for warmth. Kept to pauper's grave. And that would be a blessing. She was already walking away as she said it. Jim tried begging for money. He waited outside the theatres where Shrimp used to sell the laces to the rich people. Please, he would say to the ladies and gentlemen stepping out of their carriages. My brother's ever so ill. Please can I have some money for a doctor? 
but they would turn away as if they hadn't really seen him. When he went back to the shrimps, he didn't even try to get him to eat. He just moistened his lips with water. Shrimp's eyes flickered open. Lovely bit of beer, that is, he whispered and fell asleep again. One night, Jim went to the theatre queue again, but this time he didn't ask for money. He skipped for them instead. And when they saw that he wasn't his, holding his cap up for coins and, and how lightly he danced, they stared, sorry, they started to take notice of him. Through the ragged holes in his trousers, they could see the deep scar on his leg, but he danced as well as he had ever done. When quite a few people were gathered round, he stopped and clapped his hands. Can anyone give me a name of a doctor, please? He shouted. One that won't charge money. Nobody answered him. The theatre doors opened and they swarmed in, forgetting him. The woman with the coffee cart called him over. She gave Jim a mug of coffee to warm him up. See you, Skippin, she said. How's that friend of yours? He's still bad? Jim nodded. He wished he could carry the mug of coffee to shrimps, but he knew it wouldn't do any good. Jim gulped down the coffee. I'm looking for, a, looking for a doctor for him. Don't know one, do you? One that won't charge? I could do jobs for them. She frowned. There is a doctor of some sort, not far from here, but I've never heard him doing any doctoring, like. Barney something, they call him. The little kids next, next door to me go to his school. School? I don't want anything to do with school. Jim remembered the schoolroom at the workhouse, the lofty room and the boys quiet and afraid of their desks. And the pacing schoolmaster. The ragged school. Ain't you heard of it? The woman went on. She stopped to serve someone with her pickled eggs and coffee. All I know is some, it's somewhere where kids go when they don't have money to pay for school. They don't, they, they do a lot of praying. Again, Jim remembered the schoolroom with the painted arches. God is good. God is holy. God is just. God is love. He could hear again the thin chanting of the boys' voices as they recited it. Every day. No, he said, shaking his head. I wouldn't go there, missus. Never. Suit yourself, she said. He's the only doctor I know of. But during the night, shrimps grew worse. He was hot and feverish, and weak though he was, he coughed all of the time. Jim put his hand under his friend's head to prop him up. He pulled away the straw to push him fre fresh under, and saw that it was spotted with blood. Oh my goodness, what on earth is going to happen? It doesn't sound very good, does it, for poor shrimps? Do you think he's got cholera? Do you think he's got something else? Is it because he hasn't been eating? Oh, let's see what finds out what happens next time. Thank you for listening.